Okay, good afternoon. So we will now continue with the gamma globulins or the chapter on immunoglobulins. We'll start off with some basic biological functions of your gamma globulins. So let's take note that the immunoglobulin fraction is synthesized by the humoral system. So the immunoglobulin fraction is synthesized by the humoral system. Now we have three biological functions which is mentioned in the textbook for your gamma globulins. First, is its role in immunization. Second, is its role in your allergic or your hypersensitivity reaction. And lastly, the role of gamma globulins in the neutralization of foreign substances. So the three biological functions of gamma globulins, immunization, allergic reaction, and the neutralization of foreign substances. Now, from a biochemistry point of view, your gamma globulins have a basic structure. All gamma globulins have a light chain and a heavy chain. Now, to take this in detail, there's actually two light chains, which is the letter L, and there's two heavy chains, which is the letter H. Now, always remember this clinical quarterly that it is the heavy chain which determines the classification of the gamma globulin. So for example, a gamma, gamma globulin is classified either as IgG, IgA, M, E, or D. So what determines this? It's the heavy chain. Now, all gamma globulins also have two regions. The first region is known as the variable region. The second is the constant region or the C region. So this is very easy to memorize because the variable is letter V, constant is letter C. Now always remember that the variable region of the gamma globulin is what contains the amino terminus, while the constant region contains the carboxy terminus. Now also remember that the constant region is letter C. So this contains letter C or your carboxy terminus. So here's an illustration showing you the light chain. So this is the green and the off-white. The blue is the inside, which is the heavy chain. And of course, what connects your light, which is outside, and your heavy chain, which is inside, is the presence of your disulfide bridges. So this is more simple. So let's do color coding. So the yellow is the light chain. That's outside. And what's inside, which looks like a letter Y, is your heavy chain. Okay. And this is the N, which is the amino terminus. This is the C, which is the carboxy terminus. So what is the basic structure of all gamma globulins? It has two light chains, has two heavy chains, and it has two regions. The C or the constant region contains the carboxy terminus and the variable region or the V contains the letter N or the amino terminus. Now I'm going to isolate this illustration, which is lifted from your Harper's, showing you the structure of your IgM, which is a pentamer. Now, why am I isolating this? So this is one immunoglobulin fraction. And you will notice there's five. So there's one, two, three, four, and five. Hence the term pentamer. Now, why is this important? Because IgM is the only immunoglobulin which exists in a pentameric state. Now, since it is a pentamer, it is the largest immunoglobulin. And the clinical correlate here is, since it is the largest, it is too large to cross the placental barrier. Now, back to the classes of human immunoglobulins, we'll start off with IgG. 
This is a serum antibody which is produced in increased amounts after secondary stimulation. IgM is considered a natural antibody which is produced early in the humoral response. So IgG is the serum antibody produced in increased amounts after secondary stimulation, while IgM is the natural antibody which is produced early in the humoral response. IgA, this is the one that usually pops out, is the antibody which is found in external secretions. Magic word, IgA, secretion, secretions. Now aside from secretions, you're going to encounter IgA in your mucosal surfaces. So mucosal surfaces would include the genital urinary tract, the gastrointestinal tract, and your respiratory tract. IgA also protects the nursing infant because IgA is the immunoglobulin which is found in milk, particularly the colostrum. So please bear with my musical background. That's the ambulance. I'm in the clinic right now. So let's continue. So IgA also protects the body against the invasion of foreign microorganisms. Now the next class of human immunoglobulins is IgD. Now there are some references that say IgD, the function is uncertain. So just remember IgD, D, I don't know the function. However, if you read the textbook, IgD is a cell surface determinant which is found on the surface of your B cells. So it's a cell surface determinant of your B cells as well as your monomeric immunoglobulin M. Now for your IgE, this is the second thing I want you to master because if it's not IgA that's going to come out, it's going to be IgE. Your IgE is the immunoglobulin that binds with high affinity to your mast cells. It also plays a role in the immunity to parasites. So keywords highlighted in red, the mast cells, then we have the parasites. So always remember, IgE is released during a hypersensitivity reaction. Then you have its role in parasitic infections. So two words, allergies slash hypersensitivity and parasitic infections. Then we proceed to the major functions of your immunoglobulins. So what I'm giving is already an outline summary. IgG crosses the placental barrier. This is very important. Then IgE is responsible for opsonization. So it opsonizes bacteria for phagocytosis. IgA is secretory in function. It's found in bodily secretions such as tears, the saliva. It's also found in the colostrum, the milk, and along the surfaces of your mucous membranes. So I mentioned it earlier, the mucous membranes of the gastrointestinal tract, the respiratory tract, and the genital urinary tract. So take a second to go over this table. So lastly, the major function of your IgM. It is produced in the primary response and it does not cross the placental barrier. Therefore, at the time of birth, the predominant immunoglobulin is not IgM, but rather IgG. And we mentioned it is pentameric. Now, IgD function, I mentioned earlier, is uncertain. It's IgD. I don't know. However, it does have a function. It acts as a cell surface receptor for the activation of your B lymphocytes. So major component of the surface membrane of B lymphocytes, and it acts as a cell surface receptor for the activation of your B lymphocytes. 
It also mediates immediate hypersensitivity, that's for IgE, and IgE is associated with your eosinophils, and it defends your body against parasitic infections. So for IgE, mediates immediate hypersensitivity produced by your eosinophils, then it defends the body against parasitic infections.